Have you ever wished that your stitches looked the same on both sides, just like when you're working in the round? In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can work backwards so that you can keep all of the front of your stitches on the front and the back of your stitches on the back when you're working flat. This comes in really handy if you're working on something like clothes for amigurumi, or you're just simply working on something where you want to avoid that banding effect that you get with single crochets. Now, the only thing that we can't achieve with this technique is keeping those single crochets going in the same direction. The only way you're going to get that is if you work in the round or if you fasten on and off after every row, which is a great option, but you do have a lot of ends to deal with. Now, speaking of this, I do have a video where I did a hack on how to achieve this without having to cut your yarn, and I'll go ahead and add a link to it here. But just keep in mind that this is something I recommend for small projects because you do use a lot of yarn for that technique. But once you get the hang of this technique, this is such a great alternative. I think you're really going to love it. When I say we're working backwards, this is not the crab stitch. We're going to be doing something completely different. What we're doing is we're actually mirroring the single crochet when we work on the other side. So to understand how to do this backwards or in the reverse, let's look at how we do a single crochet. When we make a single crochet, we first go in and our hook is behind the yarn or on the back. We pull it through and then we do our yarn over, but notice our hook is in the front. And then we pull through. And that's a single crochet. And the same thing applies even if you're left-handed. You're still going in, your hook is behind the yarn or on the back, you're pulling it through, you're yarning over, but your hook is in front of the yarn and going through. So remember that because now we're going to do it in reverse. We're going to do our regular chain one and turn to get ready for row two. But when you turn, turn so that the yarn is facing towards you. This is going to make it a lot easier. Now, instead of going into the stitch from the front, we're going to be working backwards. So we're going to come in from behind. So here's our first stitch. We're just going to go in from behind. Remember with a single crochet, we went behind the yarn and then in front of the yarn. So back front. Now we're going to mirror that or reverse that and go front back. And I'm referring to where our hook is in relationship to the yarn. So here's my yarn. I'm going to go in the front of it and pull it through the stitch. So we just did front, now we're doing back. So our hook is behind the yarn or in the back of the yarn. And we're going to catch it and pull it through. So let's do that again. Remember front, back, but I want to add one thing. Once you get comfortable with this, I'm going to show you another way that's going to be even easier. So just hang in there with me. So there's the top of our stitch. We're going to go from behind. Okay. Front back. Our hook is going into the front of the yarn and pulling it through. And now in back of the yarn. So we go behind it, catch that yarn and pull it through. And then to tighten our tension, just pull the yarn towards you and continue on. Now, once you get the hang of that, the most important thing here that you really want to remember is that front motion when you start that stitch. After that, you can actually go back to a normal yarn over and still get the same effect. Okay. Front. And then you can do front again, which feels very natural. So it's just a normal yarn over and pull it through. And the only difference is it's going to be slightly looser than the other way. There's barely a difference here, just slightly looser because you're taking in a little bit more yarn when you do that yarn over. So we come in from behind. 
front, pulling the yarn through, and then you can do front again, just a typical yarn over. Hooks in front, and pull it through. Come in from behind, front, Go back to normal with your yarn over and pull through. So if you look here closely, it's a very subtle difference, but the first half of stitches are quite tight, and then the second half are a little bit looser. That's the only difference you're going to see. If you're working any kind of color work, then you're just going to apply the same technique that you normally would. You're just going to be placing your hook in from behind. So let's say, for example, I want to bring in a new color. I did a video last week all about color work, so I'm not going to go into detail here about it. You can check it out. I'll go ahead and add a little link right here. I'm going to do it by changing color through the sidebars here. Now remember we're on the back side, so we want our yarn to stay in front, bringing in the new color. and then just continue on like you normally would. Now let's say, for example, you're carrying your yarn. Just go ahead and do everything just like you would. You're just doing it backwards. So you go through, making sure that yarn is right underneath it. Remember, front. And then just a regular yarn over to complete the stitch. And then you would just continue on with your pattern. Nothing different, you're just doing it in that reverse order. Okay, I want to switch colors again. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Depending on the kind of color work you're doing, you're either going to drop that yarn or continue carrying it. I'm just going to leave it there. Front, pull through. And continue on. And that's really all there is to know. Just remember as you're working backwards, you're coming in from behind, the hook is in the front, and then depending on whichever you prefer, you can either do it from front or back at this point. And I prefer just to come in from the front again because it feels much more natural and feels much better on my wrists. It's only going to result in a softer appearance to the stitch. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know if you're going to give this a try. If you missed the video I did last week about color work and doing color changes, I think you'll enjoy that one. You can find it here along with another video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.